Um, it's recording. Okay. Right. Cool. So um, thank you again for everybody who's joining. And um, uh, so Dylan's going to show you a bunch of cool things that you can do today. Um, he's got a bunch of fall projects that are, are perfect for the season. And uh, we're super excited to, to show you all these things. So um, I'm here to answer any comments and questions that you have. So please chat um, those questions that you have. And I will do my best to ask them to Dylan in real time while he's crafting. And uh, let us know where you're watching from because we just love interacting with you guys. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Dylan from our content studio here at the Plaid Crafts um, uh, Video Studios. And he will take us through it. Hey guys, uh, yeah, again, my name's Dylan. I know you guys are usually used to Jesse and Kira down here crafting on the table. I had to move things up a little bit for me. Uh, but yeah, so today we're gonna be talking all about Mod Podge and how it relates to fall and all the kind of crafts you can do. Now, um, I know we are gonna talk about first our floral pumpkin that we've done with napkins. And then I'm gonna kind of break into some other projects that you might not have expected and showing you like the full range of our Mod Podge product line. So I'm gonna show you a few different products and how they work. Um, and we're gonna kick it off with our floral pumpkins. So I'm gonna hold this guy up before we go overhead. I just wanna show everybody, this is our beautiful floral pattern pumpkin that one of our uh, content creators, one of my peers, Emma Panuski made um, in the studio. And I'm gonna be recreating it to the best of my ability today. So um, these are done with napkins. So one of our recent favorite things to do with Mod Podge and all the Mod Podge formulas has been to use um, napkins as the paper part of your decoupage. Um, it serves as a great super, super thin paper. So you can easily get that to fold around these edges. If you were to use scrapbook paper or any kind of heavy cardstock that had a print, it would be beautiful. But when you tried to Mod Podge those on those curves of that pumpkin, they could fold and kind of look a little messy. So that's why we use the napkins. So I'm going to go ahead and get started by showing you a few tricks to separate your napkins. So you might think, ah, you're just going to cut up your napkin and put it right onto your pumpkin. And that's not always the case. Some napkins have different um, ply, kind of like toilet paper, where you have multiple layers on there. So I'm going to start with this napkin here. This is one of our beautiful florals. Um, the great thing about this time of year, there's lots of entertaining going on in general, so you can get these really beautiful printed napkins. So I'm going to start with this floral. And one thing that we like to do is start by cutting our shapes out um, before we separate the ply. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out some of these little flower shapes, and then I'm going to show you a trick on how to separate the napkin so that you get it down to that super, super thin layer. So as I'm doing that, I just kind of want to go over our supplies. So obviously napkins and your favorite formula of Mod Podge, just about every formula will work for this purpose. Today we're going to use our original gloss formula, but you can also use Mod Podge Ultra, which is a brand new product at Michael's, and you can also um, use any of the different finishes. So you could do matte if you wanted a more matte kind of, um, yeah, like a, like a kind of a rougher finish, or if you want a satin formula with a little bit of a shine. Like I said, we're going for the gloss today because I want a nice, pretty high shine on my pumpkin. So while I'm cutting that out, um, if you have some of the uh, faux pumpkins at home, you want to go ahead and base coat those in a color. The great thing about those pumpkins, though, they offer, Michael's offers them in both um, orange, traditional orange, and white. So you could actually, in theory, just go straight onto a white or orange pumpkin, however you, um, whatever look you're going for. And we're going to show you a few different ways. So I'm going to go straight onto this pumpkin, which has been painted. Um, and later on, we're going to talk about one of those white pumpkins. All right. So Dylan, people are asking, you know, if you can use stickers or you can use fabric and so on. So obviously the answer is yes, you can do all kinds of things, but this napkin technique is very specific. So why would you use these thin little napkins? What's cool about that? So before we discovered napkins, I would say that fabric would be the second best thing because it's so pliable, right? You can form it around surfaces. It would take that medium well. It would take that Mod Podge and soak in really easily. But as opposed to stickers, where you have kind of a rigid um, coating on a, like a cardstock type paper, these will actually be so thin that they can form around those curves of your pumpkin. So I've got my little flower 
all cut out here. You can see I just took kind of meticulously cut a little flower. And you'll see that there are multiple pieces on the back of my flower. There's a little bit of white and I want to get those extra plies off. So I'm going to show you a trick. You can do this for small projects and large projects alike. I have a little piece of double sided tape just on my finger. You can use scrapbooking tape, any kind of tape that is double sided. And you just want to take that and put it right on the back of that napkin and grab the front and you will slowly peel those layers off. So if you can see, I've got a single layer of a napkin there. So it is paper, paper thin. It is way thinner than any scrapbook paper. So I've got my little cutout. I'm going to throw these over here. I've got, as you can see, I've with the, the, the power of our Zoom magic, I've already cut some out. And I'm going to start applying them to my pumpkin. So like I said, I've gone ahead and base coated my pumpkin with this beautiful teal color. Now you can do any color you want. We've obviously gone with a little bit of a darker, um, kind of moodier look. So we went with the dark, but again, you can use the raw pumpkin if you're, if you're not into the waiting for the paint to dry, which would probably be my route. I'm kind of impatient when it comes to that. Um, or you could go right onto the white pumpkins. There's so many out there right now, especially with Halloween uh, and Thanksgiving just around the corner. Okay, so I've got my pumpkin that has been painted. I'm gonna set him right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little plate. I already have some gloss Mod Podge. I've just taken the gloss right out of the bottle and poured it down onto my plate. And I'm gonna grab this cool little palm brush that we like to use for these bigger projects. Now to get these to stick, you want to apply a nice coat of Mod Podge on your pumpkin before you place them down. I'm sure if you have experienced decoupaging, you know you want to put a nice coat down before you start to apply your paper. And then it's always best practice to put a coat on top to seal your paper in. So Place Dylan, while you're, before you move on, what kind of paint did you use to base coat? This yeah, particular so I used, I used full cart acrylic paint, just our normal formula. So it gives you a nice super matte finish and great coverage. We've just used one coat on this pumpkin and you can see how beautiful deep tealy green this is. Um, I can't tell you the exact color uh, before I prepped this. I was kind of flying through making a bunch of these. So I can't tell you the exact color, but it is our full card acrylic paint. And you could use any color of paint. We have a lot of specialty paints that are great for the holidays. We have our treasure gold that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. So this is our brand new ultra metallic paint. This is the best shiniest metallic paint on the market and it is totally water based. So we're going to talk about this a little later. Um, it would be absolutely beautiful if you painted your pumpkin in this treasure gold. You can actually see that we've painted the stem of this guy with this treasure gold color and this is Mayan gold. These are just absolutely beautiful paints. They come in a gorgeous jewel tone variety. Now we're doing these pumpkins kind of home decor um, but you can also do your pumpkins in a Kind of a crazier more halloween finish we have a great selection of color shift paints that actually apply and have a bit of a shift from one color to another so that could be a more fun project maybe a little more geared towards kids you could use some more halloween themed napkins to do that but we're going to go with this matte finish acrylic paint on here now i've gone ahead and placed my little piece of napkin down now as you can see it's kind of resting on top and there's actually a little bit of bubbling going on and that's totally fine. Since this paper is so, so thin, when I apply that top coat of Mod Podge, it will melt onto the surface like butter and it'll look like it's part of the pumpkin. That is the great thing about using these napkins. You could do stickers, you could do punch, punch cardstock, but you're not gonna get anything to lay down quite as flat as a napkin. Okay, so I'm gonna apply my coat there. Now, if you've used Mod Podge before, you know it goes on a little bit of a milky white color and then relatively quickly you will start to see it go clear. So we're just going to spread that guy on and I'm going to put a few others on as we chat. Now the great thing about napkins as well, you know, stickers are great. Um, you can find them just about everywhere and I know Michael's carries a lot of them, but napkins have such an upscale print to them usually. So you can find really unique patterns that you couldn't necessarily say paint on by hand. And that's why we love these so much. You know, this time of year in any of the entertaining sections, you can find these everywhere. We've got Christmas coming up. You could do these 
on candle votives. We love that because then you can see the light kind of shine through your beautiful tinted um, napkin there. And, you know, decoupaging with napkins is just a huge trend, guys. I mean, this is something yeah. that uh, for those of us, you know, who work here for, with, with Mod Podge, we see it all the time. People do this on wine bottles. They do it on, uh, you know, uh, those hurricane type glass. They do it on all sorts of um, even, a, even a lamp, um, whatever. I mean, there's so many different things. And as Dylan mentioned, you have an endless possibility of designs because if you think of all the things that come on these decorative napkins, any of those could be used for, uh, for this technique. So it really does open up a world of possibilities for you to design things. Right, John, and that's the great thing. You know, of course, we love for you guys to get your, your supplies from Michaels, but that's the awesome thing about these napkins. You can get them anywhere and you probably have some in your cabinet from an old Halloween party, from a birthday party, you know, it's also good for memories. Like if you had a great birthday party one year and you want to remember it, you can decoupage that napkin onto to something to cherish. So we've gone ahead and I have applied my little floral napkins there. You can see they're starting to clear up right where I started to put the napkins. Um, that's the great thing about a Mod Podge gloss. You get a beautiful gloss finish and it dries really, really quickly. So I'm gonna, get, again, compare it to our finished sample here. So you can see that these lay on that surface so beautifully. You see, as I turn, you can see how they have just melted on and it looks like this has almost been printed. This pumpkin has been printed. And there you go, you have a perfectly personalized project. So any napkin that you want, you've taken a great pumpkin to begin with, and then you've gone ahead and applied these little decals. And it is a super, super rewarding process. Because if you've worked with Mod Podge before, you know there can be some differences. Like if you're using that thicker paper, sometimes it is a little bit harder. Since this paper is so, so thin, it goes on so easily. Okay, so that is, I know it sounds like um, it was kind of a quick project, but that really is all there is to this project. So find your favorite napkins, apply your Mod Podge and put those napkins down and you will end up with a perfect final product. So I'm actually gonna start showing you a few other projects that highlight some of our other Mod Podge products. Um, if you are subscribed to Michael's email list, you might've seen this beautiful brushed metal leaf pumpkin on one of the recent fall kickoff emails. So this was also done by our wonderful creator, Emma Panuski. She had the, uh, the urge for the pumpkins this year and she made some beautiful projects. So I'm gonna try to replicate this for you. Um, now, again, I talked about the fact that you can use all kinds of different paints and finishes during the holidays. And one that I want to um, highlight here is Folk Art Treasure Gold. Now this is, I have two colors here today. I have our Mayan Gold, which is almost kind of a muted gold. It's not exactly a true, brilliant 24 karat gold. And then I also have our rose gold. So that's a super trendy color right now. Just about everything you see in the stores has a treasure gold option. So, or a, a rose gold option, excuse me. So this is a great opportunity for you to customize any kind of craft project with our Folk Art Treasure Gold. So, like I said, we took this beautiful white pumpkin, this faux pumpkin, right out of Michael's, and I applied a little Mayan gold stem, and then we started right onto that white pumpkin with these leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna get our pumpkin ready here and pour out some of our beautiful treasure gold. So as you can see, I'm starting with just a cute little white pumpkin straight off the shelf. And so Dylan, while um, I, I do wanna remind everybody um, that um, if you don't have all these supplies right with you at the time and you're trying to keep up, that's okay. Um, these classes are all available on demand after the fact. So just return back to the Michaels Community Classroom page. You can access past classes and you can um, go get your supplies and watch this at your own pace. You can pause, rewind, do all of those things so that you're able to capture the step-by-step uh, -step here. And so don't stress if you're thinking that you need to try and do this in real time with us. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's part of the fun of it too. You know, you can work at your own pace. We just wanna give you all the supplies you need to get started. And then we wanna 
push you out of the crafting nest and have you start on your project. So we're really excited to see what you do. If you do end up doing any of our projects that any of from any of our Plaid cl classes, please, please, please hashtag us at Plaid Crafts. Um, we are always looking on our hashtag lines and seeing if uh, people have done our project. And I know when I see people that have done projects that I have done, um, it definitely brightens my day. I love to see that people enjoy the projects that we put out there for you. So we'd love to see that. Again, hashtag at Plaid Crafts. Um, we also are recently on a bunch of different social channels. We're doing a bunch of holiday videos on TikTok. So if you haven't uh, reached out over there, we'd love for you to follow us either at Plaid Crafts or Apple Barrel Paint. And then I do want to um, I say one more thing about a, a bunch of the comments are, are people are um, having trouble sometimes finding paint in the store. And we do recognize that that's a problem. Both Michaels and Plaid knows that that's an issue. Um, essentially, guys, between uh, what the pandemic has done to um, companies' ability to manufacture, and then on top of that, the increased demand, because people are at home and wanting to craft, has created sort of an unprecedented demand for paint. So I want everyone to realize that Plaid produces paint right here in our, um, in our factory in Georgia. These are American jobs, American workers. We produce paint 24-7, literally do not stop to try and catch up with demand. So keep checking back in your store, do the best that you can to, um, to work with paints that you have or go find, you know, you can check online sources, you can check michaels.com, but um, we are doing our very best to keep up with demand and at the same time keeping our workers as safe as we can in the factories. That's yeah, it, absolutely. public service announcement. There you go, that was your PSA for the day. Listen, we love making paint and we're so glad that you guys are tuned in. So that's really the big thing. We're just so happy that you continue to craft with us. So we really appreciate it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, I've gone ahead and painted the stem of my pumpkin with our beautiful Mayan gold, treasure gold. So now we have our white pumpkin with our treasure gold stem. So my next thing here is going to talk to you about these leaves. So I'm sure if you've crafted for a few seconds, uh, you've known about these uh, faux fall leaves. You can get these at Michael's and any um, store right now, especially this time of year, because these are great things to decorate with. So this is just a vine of leaves. You can get these in um, little uh, smaller sprigs and you can get them in all different shapes and sizes. I've gone ahead and grabbed some of these. And what I like to do is literally just kind of tear these guys off. So you don't even need any scissors. A lot of times these will just pull right off of their stems. And we're going to take these and we're going to apply some of that beautiful treasure gold. So I've gone ahead and plucked some leaves. I've picked some fall leaves, if you will. And I'm going to place them down on my paper here. And I'm going to grab our rose, rose gold. So this is one of our beautiful colors of treasure gold, rose gold. Now, when you do look through these, um, I recommend seeing the awesome color range. There are some beautiful jewel tones along with, of course, your classic um, metallic colors like your gold and your copper and your rose gold. Um, and I, I absolutely love those colors. So if you get to crafting with those jewel tones, we would love to see it. So I just kind of want to show you how shiny this paint really is. You can just tell and you know a lot of metallic paints on the market are not water based they have kind of a stinky aroma so this has absolutely no odor and it's totally water based so your kids can use it you can use it it's an absolutely wonderful product so i'm going to take that and start applying it to my leaves and as you can see i know i'm a little bit far away from the camera today just because we raised it up because i'm a little bit taller um, you can kind of see that shine start to come up it almost looks like i have gilded these leaves so you can really quickly take an inexpensive piece um, of home decor and immediately make it upscale. And that is the awesome thing about Treasure Gold. Treasure Gold is absolutely stunning when you see it in person, guys. And it's, um, you know, for a water-based paint, it is nothing like it. You know, there are other sort of um, solvent-based um, toxic paints that, that create a metallic effect like this, but nothing else is as... Um, is as amazing as this in a water-based non-toxic paint. No fumes, uh, water cleanup. You don't have to worry about your kids or your pets getting into it. It's great. Right. And the best thing is the color range. You know, you walk down the craft aisle and sometimes, of course, 
you know, you see the golds and the silvers, but you never see a lavender color. Like that is the most, that is the best part to me. You know, seeing a beautiful blue and a beautiful green, it's just, it's so cool. It just makes so many possibilities for the holidays. And it goes on super easy. As you can tell, I have put just one coat and that looks like a metal leaf. It is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so as you can see, you literally just paint this on just like any other acrylic paint. So I've got those done and I'm gonna transition over to the leaves that I already have painted. And we are gonna move back to using our Mod Podge gloss. All right, so I'm gonna take a few of my leaves that I've already done. You can see that these are dry and they just shine like crazy. How long okay. would you let the uh, treasure gold dry, Dylan, before you would do this? A couple hours? I or it or... Yeah, I would let it dry overnight just to be absolutely sure, depending on how much you put on there. You, it really does, um, as the paint dries, you actually get a more and more brilliant finish. So I would let them dry for as long as you can. Um, I, you know, a lot of acrylic paints you can use, uh, start working with them after they're dry to the touch. So, you know, you do your thing, but I would personally wait about 24 hours. We did these last night so that we would be ready and they would be absolutely perfectly shiny. All right, so I'm just gonna put my leaf right on there. And since Mod Podge gloss has such a heavy body, it'll actually stick down as I start to paint it on. So you can kind of see, once you get a good coating on there, you want to totally saturate that leaf. And you know, this is such an atypical kind of craft for the fall, you know? I love that you get to incorporate leaves, you know, obviously it's the spooky season, um, but it's nice to have some really pretty home decor pieces mixed in with your traditional Halloween. Now, I will say, as far as the treasure gold is concerned, of course you want to wait overnight um, with or until it's dry to the touch. But as far as Mod Podge goes, I would let this dry totally overnight because you can see it's kind of slipping around. <laughs> yeah, and those are <laughs> those have become super stiff because of the paint. So it may take a little patience right. to get them pinned down for sure. Yes. But yeah, the great thing again is you can use any of our Mod Podge formulas for this technique. So you could use a satin, you could use the matte, or you can stick with the classic gloss. You know, these pumpkins typically come with a very uh, matte to satiny finish. So if you want a really slick pumpkin, it'd be really beautiful to do this in almost a um, jet black color and then have these metallic leaves on there. Um, it's just like a really upscale way to do these pumpkins. All right, so I'm gonna set him aside and then we'll do some zoom magic and show you the final product here. All right. So as you can see, once that Mod Podge dries, it is totally clear. You saw that it was like a milky white. We put it on there and it shines really, really nice. It doesn't take away the luster of that awesome treasure bowl. Now, Dylan, someone was just asking about the spray, and I think that they mean Mod Podge Ultra by that. So oh, yeah. that would be another way to do it, correct? Absolutely, yeah. It's funny you would say. Um, we have some Mod Podge Ultra right here. So this is um, a great all-purpose, so you can use this in place of or along with your original formulas. And this is also, one of its strong suits is a stiffener. So that would absolutely work on the same idea as far as stiffening those leaves onto your pumpkin. You just wanna lay it flat, spray those leaves on, and then they would dry sealed to that surface. And the great thing about this is it is totally uh, a spray on. It's the exact same kind of concept as our traditional formulas, but that ability to spray is a very, very useful tool. I'm sure that you've been in a project where you're wishing that you didn't have to have brush strokes or any kind of um, different application. This is just so easy. You just kind of pump your, you prime your pump and then you are ready to start spraying your projects. Um, it is an indoor outdoor and it doesn't dry with a tacky finish. So these, this is a fantastic product to pick up. And we're actually gonna talk about that in just a second. So um, 
I, our, our next little craft project here is I wanted to uh, take advantage of doing pumpkins and show you some other products that you can apply to your pumpkins and do a bit of a different look. So we've been doing some kind of upscale home decor pieces and I wanna move it into um, a little bit of a creepier mood, do some Halloween pumpkins. So um, if any of you have worked with Mod Podge for a long time, you will know that there is a fantastic product in the Mod Podge line and that is Stiffy. This is a fantastic fabric stiffener and I'm gonna show you how to use some cheesecloth and make um, several different things. So we're gonna talk through this little mummy pumpkin and we're also going to talk about our classic um, cheesecloth cheese cloth ghost. So that is a craft must. So I'm gonna kind of walk through that. Um, the beauty between this and that Mod Podge Ultra that we were just talking about is that it uh, shares some of those, those characteristics. So you can use, if you have some Mod Podge Ultra at home, you can follow along and use cheesecloth and get the same effect. So it is awesome. I'm going to move over here. I'll put him there so that we can hang out with him. All right, I'm gonna grab another pumpkin. Somebody was saying that they forgot the name of the fabric stiffening product. Well, it's called Stiffy. So it's super easy to remember because if you're thinking, yes. need to stiffen some fabric, Stiffy is the word. Is your tool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get a little baking sheet, a disposable baking sheet here. Um, this can get a little bit messy and you actually want to really saturate any of the fabric that you're stiffening. So you do kind of want to have that ability to make a mess. So I'm going to grab some of our stiffy and I am going to set our pumpkin aside there. And I have taken just regular cheesecloth. It is the time of year for cheesecloth. It will be all over your stores. So grab some cheesecloth and do um, some of these classic crafts. So what I've gone ahead and done is just cut little strips about one and a half inches. And I'll go ahead and do that just to show you about how big I'm doing. And the great thing about this is it is so simple. You can't mess it up. Um, if you have little ones, this is a perfect project because you can have them do just about anything. And the goal is to make it look kind of spooky. So you really, no matter the outcome, you've achieved your goal. All right, so I'll give you a close up there of how big I was cutting those strips. So about one and a quarter inches. And the cheesecloth is usually layered. It usually has about two layers to it. So I'm gonna kind of peel it apart so that I can get some good, get a, a better length out of it that I can wrap around my pumpkin. So I've gone ahead and separated that. I'm gonna separate a few more of those so that we can get to mummifying our little pumpkin here. Now, if you are using Stiffy or Mod Podge Ultra, you can also use um, just regular white cotton fabric. Um, over on these little guys, I'm gonna show you another project. Um, these little cute guys, we've taken crepe paper streamers. and We've just cut those up and you get a similar effect get a cute little little mummy pumpkin. But we're gonna use cheesecloth. All right. All right, so once I get a few of these little strips, I'm gonna go ahead and start to saturate them in the stiffy. So I'm gonna pour a little bit out onto my pan here. You just want to totally coat that cheesecloth. Once that is completely coated, you can see how the material kind of binds together and you want to go back in and kind of stretch it out because you want it to look like um, kind of a wider wrapping. So go ahead and do that. And you can run this back and forth across your pumpkin. So again, this is a super easy craft for you to do with your kids. It's a little messy but it's also pretty fun. <laughs> it's definitely something I did as a kid growing up making stiffy ghosts. And um, I keep talking about those and I'll show you those in just a second here. A little bit more of our product. Now, if you've noticed, as I've been crafting here, I keep reaching over to the side. We have some baby wipes. If you've tuned in to any of our other uh, Michael's events, like our pouring classes, you'll know that our right-hand man is usually um, a baby wipe. 
when you're crafting. It is a great thing to have in your craft room. Keep your clean, keep the kids clean, and still get a cool product. All right, you can see how that's starting to form. There and we the go. Cool thing about this, yeah, so you can either keep you know the mummy look with this and put some googly eyes on it like we have done, or you can also um, go more of a spider web route. You could take some of those cute little spider rings that are out there right now and pop those on so it looks like a little haunted pumpkin. All right, keep doing that. Yeah, this is definitely a great one for the kids. Uh, to to again, totally non-toxic product. They can get their hands, you know, a little bit messy with it as it it takes a little uh, takes a little manipulating of the of the fabric to get it on there the way you want. But you know what? It's it's fun. And the great thing about a mummy is it doesn't have to be. There's nothing perfect about it. You just lay it on there, right, however right. you want to do it. Right. And and unlike right, uh, right. a couple of people were asking about just watering down some glue. Uh, sure, you can do that, but honestly, uh, that doesn't work quite as well. First of all, it, it gets very, um, it, it'll crackle and over time it also yellow, whereas this product is specifically designed to stiffen without any of those sort of side effects. Right, and honestly, if you've done that before with the glue trick, you will know that it is, um, it does not get the same effect, especially if you are trying to go for a ghost. So we have a cool little stiffy ghost that we've done with cheesecloth. So like John was saying, if you were to do this with, say, a craft glue and water, it would not hold up this well. You can tell that I can literally knock on this guy and he's really hard. You could set this out on your porch and have him under your covered porch blowing in the wind as a little ghost. Um, I definitely used to make these as a kid, drench, uh, draping them over some paint bottles. So I'm going to actually show you how to do that next. So this and, is a guy um, that we've already had. Yeah. I, I wanted to say so for, for the Harry Potter fans out there, when uh, we did this with yes. black cheesecloth and they look just like Dementors, it was amazing. Yes. It's super versatile and it's just kind of a Halloween essential, right? Like the little ghosts, I mean, it's just awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna take some of the uncut cheesecloth here and I'm gonna cut myself little segment. All right, so I just have a little sheet of cheesecloth and I'm going to grab one of my bottles. I'm going to grab one of my color shift bottles that's almost totally out of paint. Um, like I was talking about earlier, this is one of our uh, newer uh, colors in our lines. So this is our blue flash color shift. I would highly recommend using these in your Halloween crafts. They have a gorgeous iridescence that switches colors. It's an awesome Halloween product. Okay, so I'm gonna use that. Like I said, I'm almost done with it. And I know if you're a crafter, you have a bunch of empty paint bottles. So here's something you can put those to work with. All right, so I'm gonna do a similar technique that I did with our little mummy. Except I'm gonna lay it out and kind of spread my stiffy on it. All right, so I'm just gonna massage that product around. All right, yeah. so you wanna get your cheese cloth. <laughs> Okay, so you got that laid out, looking good. Everyone knows why we're giggling. We are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is. We are children. Right. <laughs> okay, so as you can see there, we have a little ghost. So I'm going to leave it <laughs> kind of bunched up there. Oh boy. Yes, this will try <laughs> with all of these creases in it. So you see how, how much texture we have there. 
All right, so that will dry just like that. And that is exactly how we formed our ghost. So like John was saying, you can use all different kinds of fabric. Cheesecloth works the best just because it's so thin and pliable. Like you said, use the black if you're going for a Dementor look, or you can make a little bit different of a ghouly color. Um, you could also tint your, uh, the Stiffy product. So you could actually put a little bit of acrylic paint and mix it in with um, the Stiffy and you'd actually get a, a color in that ghost. So you could make a pastel ghost. Yeah. So wait, what did you, what did you wrap the, the, um, the cheesecloth around for that round, for that more round shape? Was that like a... Yeah. So one of the classic ways to use um, the product is to um, blow up a balloon and place that right under there, drape your fabric over just like I did with right. my paint bottle. And then once this is dry, you can actually pop the balloon. So that is the easiest way to do it. The balloon, you know, you don't have to worry about cleaning up like a bowl. You can absolutely use like a ceramic bowl or any kind of other um, surface that is round. Or, or if you wanted to shape it over something, like if you had like a cool little garden statue, you could kind of cover it in saran wrap and place your stiffy over top. And then you'd get kind of that general shape of whatever you were forming it around. Even those pumpkins that you've got right there would work just fine to wrap Yeah, absolutely. Together. You've got an extra pumpkin, you could place that guy right over. Okay, so I am going to, I'm gonna show you one last thing in my bag of Mod Podge tricks here. All right, so we haven't given Mod Podge Ultra much attention yet, and I don't wanna leave it out, and I wanna add a little surprise project here. So I'm going to show you actually how to use Mod Podge Ultra as a pouring medium. So as you have heard, um, we've done a lot of pouring um, talks on our, these Michaels Community Classrooms. And one of the great things about Mod Podge Ultra is that you can also use it as a pouring medium. So any of the tips and techniques that you've learned in our pouring classes, you can apply using Mod Podge Ultra. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use three folk art colors here, just like a nice little fall array, and I'm gonna pour with it. Um, this is always a fan favorite, that's why I wanted to do it. So, I get our light right there. Now, if you have not watched our pouring videos, I highly recommend you go back into the Michaels Community Classroom and take a look at those. They're absolutely uh, extensive. Kira spent the summer doing pouring. Um, and there are so many of them. So I highly recommend going back and looking at those. Um, if you caught one of our tips, we actually have our little canvas boards here and I've taken some push pins and placed them right on the back of my canvas board. So you can actually place these down and when you pour, your canvas is a little bit elevated and you won't um, get paint on the edges of the canvas. It'll just roll right off nice and easily. As I'm doing that, I'm going to start to set up my pouring supplies. All right, so as an addition, I'm going to use Treasure Gold along with our Folk Art acrylic. Like I said, just a nice little pretty fall palette there. And I'm actually going to use the Rose Gold. All right, so usually when we're pouring, we tell you to mix um, your pouring medium with paint one to one. I'm actually actually, excuse me, going to advise you to mix a little bit less of the Mod Podge Ultra in. Our pouring medium has a really nice heavy body that ends up giving you a nice smooth glide over your canvas. Mod Podge Ultra is a little bit thinner. It's going to do the same thing, but you actually want to add a little bit less into your paint because you don't want it to be too runny. So I'm going to continue to get these guys set up. Really, Dylan? Sorry. It's just <laughs> that time. It is. We've gone from stiffy jokes to I don't even know what. I mean, it is ridiculous. <laughs> ah, never a dull moment. Ne honestly. <laughs> the Flat Video Studio is an amazing place. Wonderful crafts are made here. That's right. And after all, you're supposed to be having fun when you're crafting, so. Right. And it is platter day. We're just giddy, right? We like are. We've had a crazy day. We are. Like I said, you know, we usually take a giant group photo 
um, in the outside of our building and we have everybody gathered around, of course. We even have some of our celebrity painters um, like Priscilla Hauser joined last year and we made a great um, a great video about that. It was just, it's just a super fun time at the office. So you'll have to forgive John and I, we're just having a good day, right? <laughs> we are. All right, so I've got my paint poured out. Um, I need a little bit more orange. I'm sure you crafters know you get every single drop out of here. These are valuable paints and we are doing the same. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my Mod Podge Ultra. Now here's the cool thing that our um, pouring medium actually doesn't give you the option of. So we have just a pouring medium. It gives you kind of a satin finish. With Mod Podge Ultra, you actually have two choices. So you have the matte, which is this yellow label here, and then you have the gloss. So I'm actually gonna do a matte pour because a lot of the pours that I do, I end up coating with um, a gloss afterwards. So I kinda wanna see how the matte will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour him out. Now, like I said, you need a little bit less with our Mod Podge Ultra. It all depends on um, the viscosity of your paint. So if you have really thick paint, you might need a little bit more Mod Podge Ultra. If you have kind of uh, a thinner paint, then you might need a little bit less. What's the consistency? Today, yeah, go ahead, Dylan. What's yeah, the consistency you're going for? Yeah, generally you want the consistency of syrup because we find that just a general pour, you can pour with all different consistencies. I'm sure you guys have seen all kinds of different wonderful projects, but we usually say to get those beautiful, really marbled looking finishes, you can, you wanna go for this syrup consistency. So I'll kind of bring that up to the camera and see how that's moving. So you generally want to pull your little stir stick up and have a little bit of that paint running down. I'm actually going to add a little bit more of my treasure gold. So that's the great thing. If you get it too thin, obviously just add a little bit more paint. If you feel like it's not thin enough, you just add a little bit more of either the medium or the treasure gold. I mean, sorry, uh, or Mod Podge Ultra in this case to get that consistency. And, and I think everybody, uh, if they've gotten into pouring, will will get a feel for how they like the paint to be. It's a sort of a, right, a personal, it's personal preference. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, we've noticed um, when we do a dirty pour, sometimes we like the paint a little bit thinner because then you get a really beautiful, um, almost like, you know, an ombre because the colors kind of mix in with each other. Um, but generally, I personally like a really nice banded pour. So you can see the orange, you can see the yellow, you can see the blue, you know, that is my preference. So that's why we're going to mix these about the consistency of syrup. But that's the great thing, you know. Um, I know a lot of comments from our uh, pouring videos where, you know, I don't have the pouring medium. What else can I use? This is a perfect thing. And you might even already have this in your craft room. Yes. What you don't want to use is water, because that's going to be the next question. People always say, right. oh, can I just thin the paint with water? Which you absolutely can, and that's a great experience. But what you'll be left with is a totally brown canvas. So <laughs> like the paint, that's the amazing thing about Mod Podge Ultra and our pouring medium, you know, it will keep those colors separate. Now, like I said, you know, you get blending and different things happen, but the, jo the general goal is to keep those colors, their, their true, beautiful, rich pigmented colors. So that's what these, our pouring medium and Mod Podge Ultra help you do. Yeah. All right. So my colors are mixed here and I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring. I'm gonna grab my popsicle sticks. Okay, so I'm gonna start with our treasure gold here in the color rose gold. And I'm just gonna start doing some bands. Now, um, like I said, if you've watched some of our pouring videos, you'll see there's all kinds of different ways to apply the paint. Um, this one has been working for me lately. Um, if you've ever poured before, you know that sometimes um, it works sometimes. It's a little off from what you were thinking. So this one has been really consistent for me. So if you're into pouring, pay attention. Um, so we like to do these kind of zigzags across the canvas with one color and then go the opposite way with our next color. I'm going to add a little bit more medium there. And in case folks don't know, there is also at Folk Art and at Michael's a pre-mixed pouring paint that- um, You should say that. Yes, so you Ding. don't, there we go. 
um, so that you don't have to worry about the one-to-one. -one. Now, the great thing about mixing yourself is that you can do something like treasure gold, which of course with the pre-mixed, you're just uh, limited to the colors that we have that are pre-mixed um, as opposed to the using specialty formulas like treasure gold. So you can do it either way, whichever is easier for you. And also, you know, if you're doing this with younger kids, the pre-mixed is kind of the best way to go because you know, you're, you're worried about making sure everybody's staying in line making their craft and you don't have to worry about mixing it or making the right ratio. It's just kind of a fun process that way. Okay, so I'm gonna take this dark burgundy color and I'm going to do the opposite pattern across my canvas. All right. It already looks cool. You haven't even done anything yet. No, I think it's gonna be, it's like, it's some pumpkin spice vibes. I really like it. I don't know about you guys. Um, I know we have viewers all across the country, but in Atlanta, we're getting a bit of a cold chill and I think we're all very happy about um, the prospect of some fall, especially for Platter Day. Like I said, we're all wearing our plaid shirts. So flannel in 100 degree weather is not exactly ideal. Exactly. And yeah, as you can see, from uh, we have folks chiming in from all over the country and yeah. uh, internationally. So uh, we know that, you know, we got people from all over watching. Yeah. Okay. It's 100 degrees wherever rest. Catherine is. Sorry, Catherine. That's too hot. Yeah, I saw that 100. Ugh. Okay. I'm going to do um, the same direction that I did that initial treasure gold with my yellow ochre here. Ooh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Okay. All right, now's the magic time. I'm just gonna pick it up and kind of swirl it around, give those paints a chance to move across my canvas and give us a cool pattern. Hopefully they'll give us give us some good, good looks today. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. I know you guys can't see just yet, don't worry. We're waiting for the big reveal. I know, I know. But yeah, I mean, I'm. It's so cool to learn, you know, when I started working here, we have the pouring medium, obviously, but to find out that we have Mod Podge Ultra that also works as a pouring medium, it's awesome. It, it, it's, you know, a lot of people have, have it in their craft rooms and having an extra thing, if you run out of the pouring medium, this will give you great results. So it's good to know we've got your back there. We sure do. All right, this guy's coming out really we, we know the weather in the entire United States now because everyone has checked in with their local. Oh, I love it. Catherine started at 100 degrees. <laughs> Don't go to Phoenix. It's even worse. It's 103. Right. Atlanta right. is lovely if you want to come here. Just everyone. Yes. October's like our best Madrid. month. 52 in Madrid. Is that Celsius? Hot. 52 right. Celsius. I don't think so. Yeah, that'll be burning. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's degrees. Look at that. How yeah. pretty. I'm Ooh. so happy. Listen, if you pour, you know that sometimes, like, it's just a hard thing. You know, you get into it. It's super easy once you get the flow for it. But, you know, sometimes when you pick some different colors like this, like our premixed, you know, you'll always know that the colors will come out, right? Like, we've picked that palette for you. But when you do your own colors, you never know if they're going to work well together. So I'm pretty pleased. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I think we're about wrapped up. I'm just going to kind of clean up here as we, we finish up. Um, so like I said, you know, napkins are the best um, thing right now, and they're super trendy to be Mod Podging to really any kind of home decor piece. Like I said, you can make it upscale with a floral pattern, and you can also um, get into more of the spooky Halloween realm um, by getting some really cool uh, spookier napkins and putting them on your pumpkins and using them with our specialty finishes like that color shift, our treasure gold. Um, the possibilities are really kind of endless. Um, I hope you guys are able to try some of these projects. Again, please um, tag us um, at Plaid Crafts and make it with Michaels. We want to see what you're working on. Um, we love doing these classes and um, that's the best part about it, that we get to interact like this and have these goofy fun times. So um, I hope that you guys all enjoyed um, today, um, craziness and all. Happy Platter Day, everybody. So, and, and one more thing before we sign off, I do want to invite okay. everybody Make sure that you follow Plaid Crafts on social media because you get all kinds of ideas and tips and tricks. We do this sort of thing all the time. So in addition to, to 
going live here in the Michaels classroom. We go live on our own channel um, every Wednesday and Friday with fun ideas like this. And we also have a Facebook group called um, Let's Paint with Plaid. And that is a, it's a group that you can join um, and share with us the kind of work that you're doing, particularly if it's more painting related as opposed to Mod Podge. But um, we'll take any, you know, obviously any kind of crafting that you're doing. So be, be sure to connect with us, guys, because we want to see you. And uh, I do know that after these classes, a lot of times we do see projects that you all have made. So please keep that up. We're uh, looking forward to, to seeing it. Yeah. So I guess that's it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I hope you guys enjoy Mod Podge. We have so many great products in the line that obviously you can see span everywhere from your traditional decoupage all the way to the brand new trend of pouring. So really the possibilities are endless and we've got everything that you could need at your Michaels store, your local Michaels. Thanks everybody. All right, thanks guys.